Hello and welcome to this video on how to achieve network security automation using Cisco Secure Firewall and HashiCorp's console. My name is Samir and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Cisco. With the shift to a dynamic infrastructure using cloud environment or microservices, it's becoming difficult for the SecOps team to keep track of deployed or decommissioned instances and services. The need for an agile and scalable environment makes dynamic firewalling a vital requirement. We can address this issue by utilizing the dynamic objects feature of FMC in conjunction with HashiCorp's console Terraform Sync. A dynamic object is an object on FMC containing list of IP addresses, changes to which take place immediately without the need to deploy them. Any changes to the list of IP addresses are done programmatically. One way is to use the FMC Terraform provider to create, update, and delete dynamic objects on FMC. So we have a dynamic object created on FMC with no mappings currently. This is a Terraform plan referencing the existing object and the resource to create IP address mappings for that object. The mapping is provided as a variable to that plan. So we install the required providers and run the Terraform plan command. It shows the mappings that will be created for the respective objects, validate it and run the Terraform apply command, which will begin the configuration process on FMC. We can verify the objects that are created by navigating to the FMC UI and validate that the values are correct by downloading the mappings. Now, if we change the values in the mapping variable and run the Terraform plan and apply command again, the updated values get applied to the FMC, which we can verify again by navigating to the FMC and downloading the values. Now, let's take a look at what console is. HashiCorp's console is a service mesh solution providing service discovery, configuration, and segmentation functionality across several environments. Its service discovery feature allows console agent to register services to a central registry. It keeps track of all the services, the nodes on which they are running, and their health data. And console Terraform Sync utilizes console as a data source that contains networking information about services and watches console state change at the application layer. It then forwards the data to a console Terraform Sync compatible Terraform module, which is automatically triggered. So Terraform is used as the underlying automation tool and leverages the Terraform provider ecosystem to drive relevant changes to the network infrastructure. The dynamic object of FMC is updated with the IP address mappings received by the module from console Terraform Sync which in turn updates the access rule containing the object, thereby ensuring that the right access is always provided to the right services. Now the prerequisite to use this module is that the console setup should be up and running. In our setup, as we can see on the console server, we have a service named TNS registered to the catalog. There are two nodes registered. One is the console server and the other the console client and both have DNS servers running on them. First, we create the CTS configuration file, which contains the definition of the tasks to be performed and details of the Terraform module and provider to be used. Console block is used to configure the console server to perform queries to the console catalog pertaining to the tasks. The driver Terraform block contains a list of providers that are being used. This is later organized by CTS to be included in the appropriate Terraform configuration files. The Terraform provider block contains details that are required to interact with the FMC API. And the task block captures the network automation process by defining which network resource to update on a given condition. It defines the list of services that need to be monitored for network automation Providers contain the list of providers that the task is dependent on and the source is the discovery location of the Terraform module that defines the network automation process of the task, which in this case is the dynamic object module 
that's based on the FMC Terraform provider and is available on the Terraform registry for use. Before running CTS, we need to configure the dynamic object on FMC and add it to the access rule, which will be applied to the firewall. The name of the object must match the service that is being monitored. And after the process begins, most recent values of the services being monitored by console service catalog are provided as values for Terraform variable services to the module, which then updates the respective dynamic object on FMC with the latest values. Once done, we can start the console Terraform sync service, ensure that CTS is installed, and then run it with the config file created. This will begin the monitoring and updating process. It will install the provided version of Terraform and begin initializing the task. On detecting a change, it starts executing the task and notifies once complete. It can be verified by navigating to the FMC. The object gets updated with two mappings. And if we download the mappings, we'll see that it matches with the IP addresses of the services. Now, uh, let's bring up another node, which is running the same service. We can see a new instance is up. It has the same service running as the other client. And the same can be verified on the console server where the DNS service now has three instances. The new instance console client 2 is now part of the DNS service. The console Terraform sync terminal shows the task has been executed since there was a change detected, meaning that the IP address has been updated on the dynamic object in FMC. So if we navigate to FMC, we can see that the dynamic object mapping now has three IP addresses. And if we download the file, we can verify that the IP address matches with that of the new client. Similarly, if one of the nodes went down or failed a health check, it would be recorded in the console server and its IP address would be removed from the dynamic object map. So we can see on the console server that now there are only two instances running that matches the DNS service. And the same can be verified on FMC, where now the mapping has two IP addresses of the clients that are up and running currently, thereby showcasing how any change in the services being monitored gets reflected on the firewall, ensuring an efficient and an up-to-date firewall policy at all times. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope it was useful and thank you for watching.